Good morning and welcome to Jez Brews. I'm using this. Excited to use it, very excited. The Lutra Kvike from Omega Yeast, the dry form. Got my hands on some after using a Kvike a Voss for the Nullman. Uh, it's, I'm gonna say it now, that yeast, I can see why people are amazed by it. I was able to, now I'm making, as you'll see, this is a, my, I'm trying to design my house beer, home beer that I'm going to tap most of the time. It's called Battleaxe Genuine Draft. Just because I like Genuine Draft, the name, and I bit the cop out. And Battleaxe because it gets served in the swinging axe, so it's an axe theme. Anyway, so uh, I made Battleaxe uh, Genuine Draft. And I also made a cream ale using the uh, Voss. So I made the cream ale first. Um, it was called the Christmas cream ale. And, uh, and then the next week I made another one, the Battle Axe. And all I did was I fed ink them. I just tipped uh, the wort on top of the yeast cake from the original cream ale. So I've got two ferments out of the Voss. I'm going to do a wash today. And uh, so I don't really have to buy it again for a long time because it, it's it's a pretty hardy strain, and you know the results the results are really what people say about it and what it means for people who don't have temperature controller. You can have a decent tasting beer without refrigeration, without you know having to worry to keep your beer in the you know high teens. Which normally, like I've got, I do have temperature control, and I did have it in the fridge, but I fermented it around 27 degrees. I pitched in the low 30s because the day I pitched this, pitched the Voss, um, it was wasn't a really for early summer. It wasn't a warm day. It was around 25, 26. So I had, I pitched it warm, and then it came down into around the 27, fermented out fantastically well, and the beers. Tastes really good, Unbe unbelievable. The, the cream ale tasted good, and the battle axe, which is I'm going to serve for Christmas Day for a family, uh, very well. So, we're making the battle axe again, a slight change where keeping the it does have a little bit of corn. I do like a little bit of the adjunct in there, delight in the body. So, I've got to have that all and use a little bit of table sugar, but. Um, I won't do that, or dextrose, which is derived from corn. But I'm gonna use the maize again, just a little bit of that maize. I'm gonna drop the biscuit malt back down, just to lighten the color up a little bit. I'm gonna keep the Munich, I love the Munich. Keep Munich there and using that Barris Burson uh, Pale with base malt. The hops are a little bit different to my original one. I'm um, just using it what I've got. I do have a new pack of Tetananga there, which I do love. I love beer in Tetananga, but um, it hasn't been opened yet, and I've got packs of Hersbrucker and also got Hotel Middlefra, which I will you will see uh, when I run through it. But um, I'll bitter with the Hersbrucker and Hotel Middlefra. I'm just going to flame out, I'll just add into there just a little bit. Of it. it doesn't really come through in the beer, but uh, the flavor, but anyway, we'll put it in there. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be. Uh, 60 minute mash and I'll give it a 15 minute rest at 76 and then uh, boil boil for at least 60 minutes uh, I do like doing a longer boil help and I've seen some people now I've seen some people write online previously keep your lids off you've got to take your lid off that's what I've learned you've got to take your lid off and you want this boiling like crazy, burning off, uh, what is it, DMS. <coughs> Get the DMS out of your beer. Uh, I'll be using well flock 15 minutes ago, and of course a yeast nutrient, which pretty big on. Uh, the water is, if you live in Australia. Okay, so I've tried tried a few different things. Uh, I haven't tried the Canton tablets, 
but I've tried filtration and I still can't get that darn chlorine so much taste out of the beer. So uh, these are $4.40 at uh, Coles in Australia. They're like your Woolly, Woolworths and Coles. They're our two big supermarket chains. And this is the water I use. So it's got a bit of minerals in it. The beer seemed to turn out all right, so there's no additions made to it. Down the track though, once I uh, get control, get a reverse osmosis, get a water sample done on my water, and then I want to make adjustments to the beer. And uh, see, it, it's funny, this, this battle axe, I've made the Voss, I think it's good. I'm going to try the Lutra. There's another yeast coming out, hopefully next year, called, uh, from Lullaman. Uh, it's called uh, Nova Lager, and it looks absolutely sensational. Yeah, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube with Kegelan and Homebrew Network, and uh, using the Nova Lager, the turnaround time's really quick on them. And um, you're having lagers, which is fantastic. I always say, for my climate here, you guys all know I live in Australia, of course. It's hot, it's humid. Uh, I do an outdoors job. I come home from work. I want a lawnmower beer. I'm just craving light lagers. Or light ales. But uh, you want something that's really going to hit the spot. So, I'm going to uh, put water going up to strike temperature. I'm going to do it at 66 degrees today. Like I said, do that for an hour, give it a rest at 76, bring it up to the boil, and then, uh, yeah. All right, so it's uh, 3.4 kilos of my base malt, which is various person parlor malt. Let's be maize, flake maize. Like that. It's been steam, so it's uh, pretty jelly so yeah. You don't have to cook the heck out of it, so. 250 grams. Yeah. Uh, blood filled biscuit malt, which I'm cutting down to 100 grams, about 250. Just want to lighten that car up a little bit more. And I've got the there too, so it's 100 grams. And then I'm going to use Munich. Munich is uh, fast becoming my favorite. Especially malt. You can be buying it by the um, 
and put on the big bags. And it is Barrett Burston Munich malt. Uh, all these came from Kegland. I do try and support the little guys too, but Kegland's just easy. And yeah, so obviously you don't have the uh, Fernzilla, not Fernzilla, Brewzilla. Hopefully you get to firm. I'll get a Fernzilla one day and try the brewing under pressure. And I just leave the 500 watt element going on these Brazilers on this model. It's just a simple uh, two switches on the side. You can turn off your uh, your big element. So this here, this came with the Brazilla, these little caps. Anyway, so I ordered two more, I lost my, lost it ages ago. Just stops any mold trimming going down there. Anyway, I got two of these for me taps. I was like, oh, that's exactly the same. So why not just take it off on me spare taps there, put it on there, problem fixed. You got Brazil and you lost it. Let's get the um, your tap cover. All right, let's start. I'm putting it in. Adjust the speed. Yeah, that's just the speed, yeah. 
and just keep an eye on it. Listen to that pump. The pump will tell you. But it's obviously, first off, it's going to be a little bit harder to get through there. And the porridge with the mash, you may get a build up. I'll get the overflow there, I normally just uh, turn it off. Uh, what you can do too, you can get in there with your, with your spoon and pull up with the water flowing better. Or you can just be patient. Okay, best, uh, I think it was 2 dollars 50 from the cheap shop. See this timer? Such a basic timer. Don't have to worry about your phone going flat or as I'm recording right now. So just turn this around. There you go. One hour. A very basic, basic way, an easy way to uh, man, time, time your brewing. It's really faultless, really. There's not much, uh, no battery in it. Anyway, so we'll let that go for an hour and uh, bring it up to boil. Oh, actually, sorry, an hour, and then we'll give it a rest for 15 at 76 and then bring it to boil. Half hour mark, then I'll add. So I buy 30 litres, 10 litres, so I buy 30 litres sponge, uh, start with 16, mash with 16, then the remaining, uh, was it 14 litres, a bit under 14 litres, goes into here and heat up. I was using the uh, barbecue, but I purchased this from a garage sale, I'll hold 14 litres and uh, just heat it up for the last half an hour. And then uh, you get up to uh, get up to temp, shut it off, and then yeah, after you do your rest, you can sparge away. It's very easy. Oh, I just hit the hour mark. And let's go to pause. Now we're gonna do a mash out. Seventy-six. Let's go. Just that. Seven shots. Seventy-six. Play. And we'll set this back to fifteen. Easy. My no, mash out is now done. Yeah, I'm gonna sparge it. Sparge, sparge, sparge. <clears throat> now it's time to use some muscle and raise this up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we go to pause. Temperature, and bring this up to boil as I sparge. Wait, uh, see that? Both elements now on. So, it's going to be my first hop edition ready here, Hurst Brucker, and it's going to be my first, and it's going to be my bittering hop and my first edition. Okay, so 25 grams we want. What does it say? It's 3.5 alpha acid. 
Anyway, so it's not going to be rude. It's going to be a very easy drinking. You really know hot bitterness to speak of. All right, we're coming up to close to boil and hot break's going to happen. After that, if it disperses, I'll add me hops. All righty, 25 grams of flame out for my Helltown Minifra. I'll uh, whoop, go on over, I'll take that back to 25 and we'll put it in at flame. Here we go, got our well flop, chuck him in there, slam dunk, and then add my yeast tincture. Right now. Yeah, the word chill is in there. To sanitize. Okay, our boil is finished and it's time to turn the elements off and pause that there. Add the flame out addition of the hardtail minifra and then turn this on and start cooling it down. All right, so I'll just remove this, of course, because we don't want to keep the heat in anymore. And I'm just going to put the lid back on just to keep any nasties out from dropping in there accidentally. And then and recirculate that. I don't know if anyone else does it, but I do it. I think it, um, pretty sure it's a given because it cools it down a lot quicker. So look at the colour. It's the colour. That's what I was going for. It should, uh, it should look pretty good in the glass. Alright. So. As you can see, we pause it. It's at 92 degrees and coming down. It's a little bit of a drip from a fitting there, but it's alright. No major issue. Right. Now just transferring the work into fermenter. So I just use the pump, of course. Uh, I don't think we'll tell you all this, just I'll just flash it in there. Got to 34 degrees, what I'm going to do is leave it in the, put into the, uh, the fridge, put the controller, bring it down to around the 22, and then I'll pitch the yeast. Probably this afternoon or tomorrow morning. So, okay, so yeah, less than 24 hours after pitching the yeast, the Lutra is working its magic in the low 20s to make a pseudo lager. I'm uh, very excited to uh, see how this turns out. see appearance wise uh, it's a beautiful pretty clear beer now uh, just due to circumstances this was in the fermenter for about probably uh, would have been about two and a half weeks at least and it was cold crash for over a week and it really cleared this beer up when I transferred it. I've a fair bit of carbonation in it now and I actually served this to my wife's uh, family uh, a family gathering and uh, everyone really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, the appearance wise, it's smack bang on. It's definitely a lot lighter than the, um, the Voss that I brewed and uh, that I uh, had for Christmas. Um, the Lutri yeast was pretty quick to work, even though I did ferment it down between, it was around the 22 mark, 21, 22. It was between, uh, no issues fermentation, it got working pretty quick as uh, quakes do and uh, yes I was very excited so we've got like I say the, the colour the colour is a uh, light golden appearance even a slight chill haze to the beer but it's pretty clear otherwise you've got one finger of head and that uh, will stick around now uh, the aroma From what I experienced from the two beers, from the Voss and the uh, now the Lutra, you kind of get like a, get a, a sweet, it's like sweet mold, but it's a bit, 
No, but it's like a, I've heard people describe it as like a bit of citrus or tangerine. It's a little bit there in the nose. But you know, it doesn't take away from the beer. I say this is a pseudo lager. All right, uh, before, I, before I go, the ABV hit the mark, it was around a four, I think it was a four, five, four, six. Uh, so you hit, you hit the mark of the ABV, all the, all the final at the starting. Don't grab his print, bang on the final gravity. Bang on again, so it all went to plan. A very much a bulletproof year. It's going to brew with, uh, with uh, the Quakes, Quebec's Quakes, whatever you call it, uh, the Voss and, and Lutra, they're all pretty bulletproof. Righto, the, uh, it's been a long video and uh, it's spanned over. I brewed this, I brewed this a Friday before Christmas Day, so I'm nearly into February, so yeah, it's, what's that been? Five weeks. Let's get, in, let's get into it. Cheese is all. That Munich malt's really there. The Munich it has that, that German streaks of beer, it's funny enough. And you get to that slight bit of biscuit flavour from that biscuit malt. The corn, I'm not sure if I can pick the corn up. Maybe a little slight bit of corn there, slight bit of that corn sweetness that you get from uh, uh, the American adjunct lager style is there. Maybe at the end too. The base malt provides substance. I personally, I'd love to go back to the base malt to make this again. This is trying to make a house beer. Make this again, there's a few things I want to do. I want to use Nova Lager. And I'd also like to change my base malt and go back to the Wayman Pale Pilsen Malt, which I've used previously uh, with great success. So I think that'd be great to use too. I'd also like to uh, get a pH meter, just to keep an eye out on the pH, which is pretty important to a beer. And then also uh, getting, using more brewing salts. To really start screwing this recipe down, I'm thinking I probably would drop the corn in it. I used the corn to lighten the body, but I could probably use a little bit of wheat malt to do that. or not really worry about it. It has its own little flavour. It has this slight little bit of sweetness. The hops kind of come through, that kind of noble hop, a little bit of herb, herbal, a bit of earthiness. Slight little bit, it's, it's not bitter at all. I was very mindful that I didn't want to eat. I didn't want a lager being bitter bombs, it turns a lot of people off. And this beer is made with it's made to be drank by everyone. It's just not for myself, it's to share with everyone and make it uh, approachable for everyone to, uh, to have a glass. So, what can I say about Lutra? Lutra does not disappoint. Um, it, like I say, there's things the way I can improve it. Uh, I have no idea what the pH is doing, not being so blind to it, uh, really screwing down the water profile. But you know, bulletproof yeast, Lutras, and, and the Voss could bake, or Quake. Uh, the Lalman Voss, it, it was also fantastic as well. So uh, I had that for Christmas Day. No, that was a bit more of a rush job, and nowhere near as clear as this. I didn't cold crash for over a week or more. But um, that's that's just absolutely uh, stunning, that, in the glass. And like I said, it's been kegged for over two weeks, and we gave it a pretty good hit. It's probably only about, probably, I don't know, five, Five leaves left in it, if that, in the key. Could be less, it's the mystery. So all in all, the flame is good. And it's like, it. there's always things you can tweak. Biggest tweak will be the yeast. The tweaks I'm talking about with the malt, knowing the pH. And the big one is Nova Lager has finally got to Australia in the small packet sizes, not the big giant bricks. And I have the ability to brew lagers, no drums, all year round. I can do it due to 
the uh, temperature control south in the, old, in the freezer. So the plan is people are over Nova Lager. I live in Australia. It's darn hot. And I'm not, you know, I do enjoy lager. I, I do enjoy, you don't have to, have, lager doesn't have to be plain and boring. That's uh, probably the biggest, biggest misconception out there. Especially when you're brewing your own, you can spice it up a little bit. You can still have that snappy, crisp lager that really refreshes, crushable. And you can enjoy your friends and family. And, and um, it's a good way, it, 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 because really the gateway beers, it's uh, people like me and you who uh, pretty much, pretty much the uh, disciples really, aren't we, of uh, better beer. So, uh, please watch this episode of Jez Brews. Uh, it's it's been uh, really I'm very very happy with this beer. Recommend Lutra, pretty much bulletproof and their temperature control. Don't need temperature control with it really, especially Voss. Uh, yeah, there's some great videos there on YouTube. Go you know, if you just Google them. Scotch Pie, Mr. Scotch Pie. He uh, he compared Lutra to Nova Lager recently, and uh, he's used Lutra a fair bit. He's good to watch. So, Mr. Scotch Pie, I'll put the link down there, you can have a look at these videos. Alright, you guys take care, and I'll see you in the next Jez Beer Reviews, or Jez Brews. Bye.